This will be a quick overview of 1D vertical motion that we've been referring to as freefall. I'll start with the concepts and then I'll go into more of a math review. Remember that the definition of freefall is the acceleration due to gravity. The value for gravity on Earth is negative 10 meters per second squared. The unit of meters per second squared corresponds with the fact that this is an acceleration. The acceleration due to gravity is dictated and driven by the mass of the Earth, which explains a few concepts. Like, when in the absence of air, all objects on Earth drop at the same rate. Even though there are small differences in the mass between the two items, compared to the Earth, which is very much larger, they would have the same gravity. Let's explore the features of an object whose motion is in 1D vertical, meaning straight up and straight down. An object such as this rocket can take off with an initial velocity. Because of conventional directions, the launch velocity, up, would be positive. At the apex of the flight, the object will momentarily stop and change directions, and its velocity will be zero at that point. As it falls, it will accelerate, meaning increasing in velocity, to the point where the velocity where it finally lands is equal to the initial velocity, but in the opposite direction. 1D vertical motion, up and down, have to the two trips that are mirror images of one another. Whatever the height is going up is the same as the height coming down, only in the opposite direction. The amount of time that it takes for the rocket to fly up to its apex matches the amount of time it takes for the rocket to fall from its apex back to its original position on the ground. As for the acceleration due to gravity on the rocket, it is constant at all points in the motion. Based on that, let's consider this situation. It says a rocket launches at 25 meters per second. With what speed will it land? It will land at negative 25 meters per second the same magnitude as the initial velocity, but in the opposite direction. Let's remember that by conventional direction, everything up is positive, while everything down is negative. When analyzing the motion graphs of objects in freefall, we have to consider the slope of the line and the direction. The pattern will be consistent with what we've already learned. Curved lines on a graph will translate to a straight and slanted line on the next graph, which would then translate to a straight horizontal line on the next graph. Since these are exponential curves, we will have to consider the tangent at the various points along the curve to discuss the slope. In the first one, we start with a line that has a small slope and then increases to a larger slope. The distance decreases. The corresponding velocity time graph would have a straight line starting at a low velocity, such as zero, to a greater velocity, but in the opposite direction. The acceleration time graph will be a horizontal line at negative 10 meters per second squared. Since objects in free fall all have the same acceleration due to gravity. In the next one, the tangent to the line shows going from a low slope or low velocity to a greater slope or greater velocity as distance is increasing for positive velocity values so that the line on the velocity time graph is a straight and slanted line going up in the positive quadrant. 
Again, the acceleration time graph will reflect gravity at negative 10 meters per second squared. In the next one, the tangent to the line shows going from higher value to lower value and decreasing in distance. Here is the corresponding velocity time graph. And as you would predict, the acceleration time graph is the same as the others. The pattern continues to hold, curved lines to slanted lines to straight lines. And lastly, the distance time graph shows motion that starts with a greater slope which then decreases so that it is slowing down but also moving away. Because this motion is in the positive direction, our velocity time graph will be expressed in the positive quadrant. The acceleration time graph is again the same. Here are the equations that we've used for vertical motion. Let's make sure that we know what each of these represents. Y represents the height, the vertical displacement in the Y direction. Gravity, G, or the acceleration due to gravity, A sub G, is present in all three equations. Of course, we know the value of that is negative 10 meters per second squared in all instances, regardless of the motion or non-motion of the object. The only other variable besides gravity that's consistent in all three of these equations is the initial velocity. Depending on the situation, the initial velocity can either have a value or it will be zero because the object has either not yet moved or is at the apex. Notice that since time is only listed in the first equation and the third equation, if time is neither given nor asked for, you would use the second equation to solve the problem. Likewise, if no final velocity is given or requested, you would use the first equation. It all depends on what the given information is and what the question is that's being asked to choose the appropriate equation. From this point, we're going to talk a little bit about basic math operations and then run through a few sample problems. Because these kinematic equations are a mixture of addition as well as multiplication, it's important that you follow the correct order of operations. I find that it's easiest to go ahead and substitute in the values that you have, especially since in some cases expressions like uh, initial velocity are equal to zero and that somehow simplifies the equation overall. Whenever an expression is added to another and you want to move it across the equal sign, you have to do the opposite operation to addition, which is subtraction. So for example, if I were to move that, it would become y minus vit equals 1 half gt squared. You can never combine terms that are not the same or across this addition sign. For example, t and t squared could never be combined because that's two different operations going on in the equation and vf squared and vi squared. Even though they're both v and they're both squared, they are different entities and cannot be combined. If you're rearranging, you have to resolve the addition before you could do anything about multiplication or division. For example, if you wanted to move the 2g to the other side of this equation because you're trying to solve for y, that can't happen until that's the only thing left on that side of the equation. So for example, we would have to have already subtracted the vi squared from both sides of the equation. And then in order to set it equal to y, we could then divide both sides by 2g, essentially moving it from the right to the left, because on the right it would cancel out. Now let's explore these equations in action. Undisputably, the best way to deal with these problems is to use the guess method. 
Also, to thoroughly read the question and use reading comprehension to make sure that you're answering the question that's being asked. In this question, it says, a stone is dropped from the top of a tall building. Although they did not give us the initial velocity, it is implied that before the ball was dropped, it was not moving and would therefore have a velocity of zero meters per second. It says after three seconds, so we know that to be a time, it asks how tall is the building or the vertical displacement. So they're looking for y. So we have now identified the given information as well as the unknown. We also know that gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. Now that we've identified these variables, we need to select the equation that matches. In this case, that would be y equals initial velocity times time plus 1 half times the acceleration due to gravity times time squared. Remember, y is what we're solving for. The initial velocity was 0. We know gravity to be negative 10. And the time is given as 3 seconds. Here it is printed out. The units start to resolve themselves, which is handy for verifying that we set up the equation correctly. Here, second squared will cancel with second squared, leaving us with a unit of meters, which is appropriate for measuring the height. The final answer is negative 15 meters. Negative because we're measuring from the top down to the ground. In this question, a coin is being tossed. We are only concerned with the first half of the flight from the toss to the apex. Notice that the diagram is already labeled with the initial velocity of 5 meters per second, positive because it's going upward, and the apex velocity being zero. Our given information then would only include additionally gravity. Time is not given nor requested. What is asked for is the vertical height, y. So we'll need to choose the equation that has these variables but does not have time. That will be vf squared equals vi squared or vo squared, same thing, plus 2g or acceleration due to gravity times y, the height. We can either substitute in the values being careful not to lose track of which things are squared, or we can rearrange the equation and then solve for the unknown y. In that instance, we would subtract initial velocity squared since it's being added at this point. The opposite of that is subtraction. So we get vf squared minus vi squared, and then that equals the original expression of 2 a y on the right. And since we're trying to isolate y, we would then divide both sides by 2 times gravity. It would cancel on this side and then be in the denominator on the other side. Then we can substitute in our values and solve for y. Either way, you should get the same answer. Here it is with the number substituted in. Notice that the 0 squared becomes null the negative 5 squared divided by negative 10 times 2 will give us our final solution. And if set up correctly, the units will resolve as well. We square meters per second, so that's second squared canceling second squared. This, when we square it, became meters squared, so one of those meters cancels out, and the final unit is meters. Now let's consider the problem where a rocket or some other projectile launches straight up and then straight down. We know a few certain truths, that the velocity with which it takes off, the initial velocity for the launch, will be positive because it's up. At the apex, that velocity will be zero. For the first leg of the trip, that's going to be the final velocity. For the second leg of the trip, that's the new initial velocity. Let's read the problem. A rocket launches at 28 meters per second, so our initial launch 
is going to be 28, positive 28 meters per second. The question is how much time. And then we know that the final velocity at the apex is zero. We know that gravity is negative 10 meters per second squared. So all we have to do is plug those values into the formula that has the same variables. By choosing the equation that has both velocities, gravity, and time, just like the variables that we get from the question itself, we substitute in. Now as far as the math goes, we have to deal with the 28 meters per second separately from the negative 10 because negative 10 is being multiplied to t. That whole expression is being added to the 28. So first we'll have to move 28 to the other side. Now the only thing remaining on the right hand side is a number multiplied to a letter. If we want to have the letter by itself, we'll have to take and divide that number on both sides. Since 10 and t are multiplied, the opposite is division. This will look like the, like the following. The negative signs will cancel each other out. Meters will cancel each other out. One of the seconds will cancel out. So our final answer for time will be in the unit of seconds, which is appropriate. And 28 divided by 10 is 2. 8. So there's our final answer. I hope that running through each of the types of problems will encourage you to be very methodical. The key is to follow the system. Write down the given information. Write down the variable that represents it. Write down the value. Make sure that you've checked whether it should be positive or negative, And include the proper unit. Write the equation and show how you substitute it in. If you start with the substitute step just from the problem, you're going to make mistakes. So discipline yourself to follow the system and you'll have a lot less stress about working out these problems. Good luck studying for your test.